The Journey of Benevolence, written by Tracy R. L. O'Flaherty. The Journey of Benevolence was written to inspire all beings to find one's imagination, to find within compassion towards all beings, to extend kindness to another while discovering one's truth of who they are for we are love underneath layers of human experience. We are love, we are light, so grand, held deep within to extend forward as one walks their journey of enlightenment. We are miracles creating miracles. We are miracles discovering miracles. We are miracles sharing miracles for we are one we are part of the whole divine creation is within all divine creation is the miracle that we all have within the journey of benevolence is a series of three books book one is titled ease and enlightenment Book two is titled Wisdom and Enlightenment. Book three is titled Knowing and Enlightenment. The books were read by author Tracy R. L. O'Flaherty. The copyright number is 11311958. Please feel free to share. Thank you. Introduction. The journey of benevolence has been written to share with others the innocence and grace of imagination, to become one with Mother Earth, and the character Ben represents each soul, as each soul, underneath layers of human experience, is light of compassion, light of kindness, light of wisdom, light of oneness, and a love so expansive, a love so grand, that each soul holds within the beauty of the journey of benevolence. The stories have been written through the love that I hold and share. This love is connected to divine creation. We are all one with one. We expand our greatness into the light of the universe and the universe expands light upon us and we dance in the oneness. This story is shared in book two, Wisdom and Enlightenment. Story number 18. Beauty. Out in my Land Rover, exploring the great lands of Africa, I was amazed by the beauty that surrounded me. I traveled slowly across the vastness, watching for great sights to take pictures, when I came upon the perfect portrait of magnificent color and beauty. I parked the vehicle and got out from behind the wheel. I set up the camera on the tripod and focused in from a distance to the great giraffes that roamed the land. As I was focusing the lens of the camera, to my surprise, I heard a voice from behind me. What are you doing? I jumped, thinking I was alone. I turned quickly to see a rhinoceros, a very large rhinoceros, I may add. Um, I stuttered, looking to get my ground. I'm going to take photos of the giraffes that are beyond, and I pointed to the group. He nodded his head slowly. They are beautiful. I nodded, now realizing there was no harm in my path. I noticed the rhinoceros looked sad. His head was hung low, and he started to walk away. Excuse me. I said in a soft tone. Is something bothering you? 
He shrugged his shoulders and appeared to be heavy in heart. No, I suppose there isn't anything. I didn't believe him as his voice was low and monotone. I would be happy to help if I can. No, you can't change this, he muttered. What is bothering you? He looked directly at me and said, very rarely do people take pictures of the rhinoceros. We don't have brilliant markings like the giraffes or the grand presence like the lions. We don't even have great personalities like the monkeys. We just somehow get looked over. I studied his face and I knew this had to be remedied. I would most certainly have taken a photo of you, but to be very honest, I didn't notice you. See, that's what I mean. How can I be missed? Look at my size. I was looking the other way when the giraffes got my attention. Would you like me to take your picture? I asked in a soft tone. No, it's okay. You wouldn't have. You were just making me feel better. Oh, that isn't true at all. I am speaking my truth when I said I hadn't noticed you. In fact, you frightened me when I heard your voice. He nodded and started walking off. Wait, I said, you're not giving me a chance. I would very much like to take your picture and I would very much like to take pictures of your family. He turned back now with a tear in his eye. It's okay, he said. I watched as he sauntered off and I didn't understand how I didn't notice him. He was very large in his presence. I turned back to continue with the pictures of the giraffes, but my heart was uneasy. I just knew I couldn't let him walk away without trying a little more. I took the pictures I desired to capture and loaded back into the Land Rover. I started to drive in his direction. It was only minutes when I came upon him. Excuse me, I said as I drove very slowly beside him. I would very much like to take your picture. You see, I'm to take these pictures and send them back to my family in Canada. They have never seen a great being like yourself and I would really enjoy sharing my experience with my children. They have only seen a picture of a rhinoceros in books. He looked at me and said again, you wouldn't have done it before. It's only because you feel sorry for me. I heard what he was saying, and it did appear that I was just trying to cheer him up. Wait, I said, I want to show you something. I parked the Land Rover and reached into the back seat for my carrying bag. He waited as I opened the bag. What are those? He asked. These are pictures that I have taken and I want to show you something. I started to show him photos and as I shared, he nodded his head. Those are very nice. Did you see a rhinoceros in these photos? I asked. No, that's why I say that we are overlooked because we are not as brilliant as the others. I understand why you think I don't have pictures, but is it possible that I don't have a picture because I hadn't found you? It is rare that a rhinoceros is out in the open. You are a treasure, a treasure. He started to laugh. I don't think so. Well, I do, and my children will think so too. He shrugged his shoulders and started walking away. Hey, wait a minute. I'm telling you the truth. I would like to take your picture. I will cherish the picture and the memory of meeting you. He walked along and I drove beside him. I noticed we were heading in a direction that I hadn't traveled before. I've never been here, I said. 
He remained silent, and I remained quiet as well, trying to make this right. He needed to know how important he was. Do you have family? I asked. He nodded his head. Are they up ahead? He nodded again. Do you think I could take their pictures if you are not interested? He stopped in his tracks. I am interested. I just think you're only doing it to make me feel better, to make me feel important. But you are important, I said. You are unique. He listened to my words. How many others look like you? I asked. He shrugged his shoulders. Not many. I think it is a great thing that you are as unique as you are. I never thought about it much. I noticed the others in a group ahead. Wow, this is where you live. I could see the beauty in the group. Please, I said. Please allow me the privilege and honor to take a picture. I truly don't have one of your magnificence. As we were approaching, his family met with him. He shared that I wanted to take a picture. They all nodded in agreement. Okay, they all said. It would be fun to take pictures. Okay, what a great miracle, I said out loud. I removed my camera once again and set up the tripod. Can you all gather in a group so I can fit you all in? They huddled together when I noticed he wasn't participating. Why aren't you standing with the others? He shrugged his shoulders again. I walked over to him and I whispered in his ear. The others waited. I went back to the camera and he went to the group and stood in the center. Okay, everyone, on the count of three. One, two, three. I took many pictures that day and thanked them for their cooperation. My children will adore these photos. Thank you, I said. I got into my Land Rover and drove away. As I headed back from where I once began, I realized that I had inspired the uninspired, that I made another feel worthy when they were feeling unworthy. And it occurred to me that we are all treasures regardless of our appearance. But I could see that when one compares themselves to others, it is easy to get caught up a feeling less than. I looked into the rear view mirror and studied my eyes. I could sense that I was more than my body, that we all are. The rhinoceros is more than his body, and so are the tigers, lions, and monkeys. We are one with divine creation, and all divine creations are one with us. What made me whisper the words, you are magnificent because you are who you are meant to be? And what made the rhinoceros know that I was telling the truth? I suspect his heart whispered to him at the same time, shining light from within to the greatness of all others. <laughs>